What's up guys, I'm Alex. I'm Jason, we're the Table Monkeys, and today we are gonna get deep, deep, deep inside the hook. Yeah, we're continuing our video series on the triad of arm wrestling techniques and our mission to become martial arm wrestlers. Yeah. Uh, in our last video, we covered the post and we talked about how it's obviously closest to the top of the hill, so it's the best move to start from, but the hook is a great counter to the post. And so we're gonna explain that in this video. We're gonna talk about how to set it, the fundamentals, what works against it, what doesn't, and what it leads you to in a match. Yeah, exactly. And uh, same way that we discussed uh, with the post, which we'll throw a card up in the window. Um, as Alex said, the post is about rise, it's about height. So uh, the primary uh, focus for the post is that rise and height. So where we think the best place to start with the hook is what's the primary focus for the hook? The primary focus for the hook is internal rotation, is getting the match inside your body, inside your shoulder, close to the center of your frame, uh, make it about your frame, mm -hmm. test your frame, all that kind of stuff. If we look at the arm wrestling hill of techniques, which again, card in the window, and, uh, and I will throw up a diagram, and as you can see on this diagram, the hook side of the hill is all arm dominant moves, hook and drag, uh, hook and drive, uh, shoulder roll, flat press, those are all moves that are based around the arm. And as you go down the hill on the arm, on the hook side, and we get all the way to the flat press, we get to the point where we're using as little hand as possible and just making sure that we've secured our internal rotation in order to keep our shoulder on top of the match and keep the match, again, inside our body. Um, so that's why we, primary uh, focus for the hook is gonna be internal rotation. After that, it's definitely wrist flexion. The same way for the posting top roll, the next most important thing is containment and then pronation to roll through. For a hook, once you've got the match inside your body, you wanna secure the match mm -hmm. by establishing some sort of wrist flexion. And then from there, there's a lot of different ways uh, to finish. Yeah, the wrist flexion is gonna allow you to be wrist on wrist with your opponent and make it about arm strength and, and, and testing your frame. Because once you're past your opponent and you're on your wrist, that's when you have access to all these other strengths. Yeah, and one thing we talked about in the original video uh, explaining these this triad and how they all work together, uh, we explained how with each move, there's how it rel relates to the hand. Uh, with the posting top roll, we explained is trying to go over the hand. Uh, the hook, as Alex just said, is trying to go past the opponent's hand. So that's again why as long as I get this internal rotation, even if I don't get any wrist flexion established yet, I'm wrist to wrist, the match is inside my body. From here, whether I drive to the side, there's ways for me to establish my wrist flexion without actually having to like turn my opponent's hand down. I can just get myself in a position where my wrist ends up being bent. And once it's bent and I'm inside my body, now my opponent's got a lot of, uh, of ground makeup in order to get out of here. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, he's exactly. very trapped. Uh, inside my hook at this point. He's deep, deep inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and the reason why it works so well against the post is because you've ch chosen not to fight me up high. Um, so you're posting here. So I'm choosing not to fight you up high. I'm gonna chop down on your wrist and take your pronation, which is gonna kill your ability to post because you, now you're on your bicep. You're not on your back strength anymore. Yeah, and my riser, doesn't matter what I'm doing with my riser, it's gonna have no effect. Yeah. Uh, on his hand because again he's past that point yeah exactly i'm around the hand i'm wrist to wrist and now it's just blood. just pound deep inside <laughs> <laughs> um okay so uh again the internal rotation is the key and uh as we kind of explained earlier, but now we'll kind of explain it further, is how that connects you to the rest of the hill, right? So once the once the mass is inside my body, uh, if I do get my wrist bent, then like we said, we've got options. Again, if you look at the hill, uh, you can drag your opponent down. You can just straight drive to the side. Um, there's a reversal option here if you've got somebody who's driving back against you sideways, but that's, that's sort of another uh, thing. Um, but once we're here, if let's say my opponent is able to somehow, he's got tons of back pressure, tons of rolling strength, and he's actually getting, starting to compromise my wrist flexion. Well, I could bail on my internal rotation and come outside and go some weird place deeper on the hill. But in reality, techni technique wise, if I can maintain this, where my shoulder is outside my wrist, even if he loses, or even if he's able to get into my fingers, I can just commit my shoulder more and now I'm in a press position. 
which is again establishing why this internal rotation is what keeps the whole hill connected, yep. not the wrist flexion. The wrist flexion is important as we've established with all these moves and we'll keep saying, all the fundamentals are involved, but there's one that will be most primary to continuing on the path that you've started on. Right, right? so if you're in that, if you're going for the hook and you lose your wrist flexion, it's a lot easier for you to transition to a flop than it is for you to transition to some outside technique. So it just yeah. it makes a lot of sense. Um, but if you were to go for a hook, you're not able to establish your internal rotation, but you are to get, able to get some cup, it's a lot harder for me to get the match back inside my body from here uh, and continue in an inside path. Um, really, my best option is to transition to some outside move, but that would have to make a huge jump to the outside move uh, yeah. side of the hill. And in that time, you're probably gonna pin me. Exactly, and the main thing, the main reason for saying all that is, is, is uh, exemplifying how the internal rotation is the key fundamental. If he can keep that internal rotation, even if he loses his wrist, he's still got more options, he's still much more in the match, but if he loses that internal rotation, even though he's got his cup, in order to get any of that back, he's gonna have to give up too much. If, if we're at all comparable uh, in strength, then it's not gonna work. Obviously, if he's way stronger than me, he could probably give all this up. And then, yeah, yeah. straight to the side, Todd Hutchins style. Like, yeah. There's options if you're way stronger than your opponent, yeah. but that's not what this is for again, yeah. right? And, uh, and what we're trying to establish here are what are the clear technical uh, paths to, to getting where you want to get to. Yeah. So the thing to note there, if you, if you feel like you can't control center uh, with your opponent, which you should hopefully be able to establish in the setup, uh, but if you feel like you can't control center in the setup, then going for a hook going inside is not your option. Even if you feel like you can rock his pronation and, and your, your flexion is gonna be way too strong for him, if he can keep you outside your shoulder, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter that you can get flexion. Now you need to think about, I can't keep inside my shoulder, so what move is gonna be best for me that I don't need to be inside my shoulder, but I can keep my wrist flexion and start going down the hill that way. Right, so in talking about that, what is the best counter to a hook? And we, and we discussed this in our intro video, the low hand top roll is a great counter to the hook. Yeah. Um, because I'm attacking one of his key fundamentals, which would be wrist flexion. Yeah. And I'm dragging as well, which uh, limits his ability to stay inside his shoulder. Yeah, exactly. So instead of just just dominating and trying to fight, like uh, like doing what Ryan wants to do with the, <laughs> with RBJ and just start here and push, which is obviously ridiculous. Um, but again, since you know, okay, you, you're going against a good hook puller and he's got that center of the table established, I'm not gonna beat the primary thing that I need, to, that he needs is internal rotation. So now I need to figure out how to beat internal rotation by taking other things away. The sort of the way we talked about with the post, instead of trying to beat him up high, you've got to beat his rotation so that he can't use the height anymore. So it's, it's similar to this. So by dragging and getting into his fingers, uh, I'm keeping him outside his shoulder. Maybe, maybe I don't have him way outside and maybe he's not like super opened up yet uh, or anything like that. But it's enough to really limit the, the pressure I can, I, can put, I can put into the match. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and so much of that, again, a, a hook puller is trying to get past my hand, so he's usually coming forward in some manner. So I'm eating that space up with the low hand and taking a lot of that uh, away from him. But again, I'm doing it through the secondary uh, strength that he wants in order to affect the primary strength. Because if I just try to attack that primary strength this way, if he's too much or, too, you know, I end up out here and he's still got his shoulder behind his hand a bit, he's in a good defensive hook position, it's just not going to be the right move or the right way to attack it. Um, so you're always thinking about filling the gaps, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot easier to go with your opponent as he's coming forward come back on him and take his hand as he falls into that trap. Yeah. That's why low hand works great against the hook. Um, but there are a couple of variations of a hook mm -hmm. that we wanted to talk about yeah. and a couple of variations of low hand top roll we want to talk about that are great counters. So in a hook, obviously we talked about internal rotation and cupping, um, but you can either go low with a hook and more of a chopping style as where you're chopping down on your opponent's arm or you can rise and supinate into your hook, more of a high hook style of hooking. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're both obviously hooks, but they attack your opponent a little bit differently, attack the arm, the arm a bit differently. 
Um, and, and they're gonna they're gonna counter for like again with a post. If if my opponent is just straight trying to go up and out, the chopping action works great. Uh, but if my opponent is trying to drag on me and get up into my hands, then this cupping high uh, works better because you're, you're, you're a member, well, we haven't gotten into the low hand yet, but what you'll learn about the low hand is that the going over their hand is a great counter. So it's kind of like combining that, like you're going high to establish, maintain some of the height gain, but you're still trying to set your hook. Right, and now I've got, because of doing it that way, the low hand hasn't been able to get into the fingers as much, and I'm not affecting uh, his wrist flexion at all, so now he's able to stay inside his shoulder much easier. Even if we're strapped together and I start pulling this way, he's got a lot more connection than if he were to go low and get out like this and be trying to pull me down, because now I'm pushing up, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and we'll get into the low hand, how the low hand counters when the hook does that, when we actually talk about the low hand. But again, with all these moves, there's variations and there's you know uh, adjustments you can make to all of them to make them really effective. So someone like Travis Bajan, for example, who's a post a top roller 110% of the time, uh, he's always gonna change that posting top roll a little bit depending on who it is that he's arm wrestling. Uh, because some people it's gonna be more effective to add more back pressure, some people it's gonna be more effective to add more uh, up pressure or rising pressure, like through his wrist. Some people he might need more flexion, mm -hmm. some people it's more side. Like it's everybody's gonna be a little bit different and that's what makes him such a good martial arm wrestler is he understands his moves so well and the other moves so well that he only has to adjust his move to match the other moves, right? Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, exactly. There's a ton of variation within each individual move, and that's why training all your fundamentals is super important. Um, obviously, the best way to train for your hook is to hook on a table. You get better at hooking in practice while you're actually arm wrestling, but there are certain exercises you can do to help your hooking technique. So that would be anything that requires internal rotation, usually with some uh, supination stability, and then some form of wrist flexion. Um, and since you just did an internal rotation exercise, something that's more about pulling towards your body using drag and bicep. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but again, mainly just working to keep the match inside, and then once you've got it there, trap them in your hand with the wrist flexion. Those are gonna be the best ways to strengthen your hook aside from just training on the table, yeah. which there's gonna be nothing better than doing that. Uh, but now if you've been following the series and you uh, learned the posting top roll, and maybe your teammates, you guys worked on your posting top roll last practice, now you've got the hook, uh, start playing with those together. Let one of you uh, set up and go for a post and the other one set up and go for a hook and try to uh, see how they play uh, with each other. Yeah, exactly. If the strengths are similar, then you should end up in a hook 9% of the time. <laughs> And if they're not, you'll you get your hand taken real quick. Get up! Oh my word, let go of that! So, yeah. <laughs> we'll find out pretty quick. Yeah. Um, but that's the video. If you liked it, please like the video, leave some feedback in the comments. Smash that bell, subscribe, all those things. And monkeys out. Peace.